ladies and gentlemen, I have finally decided to do what I have been told. I have finally decided to do what I have postponed for a long time. Almost one year in the making. Well, more a couple of months, but you know what I mean. Now, I've promised a lot of video ideas in prior videos, and this one I've decided to finally do. And this might be a beginning of a new series that I might create. And that series is to summarize and review all of the Jojo Bizarre Adventure light novels. Now, there is quite a handful of light novels that Hirohiko Araki has accepted and has drawn art for, like Purple Haze Feedback. And the one that I'm going to be covering right now. Now this isn't going to be a perfect summary because I read the book in the beginning of Monday and it's Friday when I'm recording this video. So I want to give a big thanks to the Jojo Wiki for giving me a refresher on the story and the characters that are unknown or only known in the story. And what story? Is it the one that I'm going to be discussing? Well, I'm just going to say it. It's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Heart, Golden Ring, or also known as Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind 2. Now, I have already heard of the characters in this light novel. I already knew about the cure and other more broader details like the characters. But if I had to explain and summarize this story, I had to, of course, read it myself. And later on, I'll give my thoughts and opinions on if the story is good or if the story is a two pack of ass. So the story takes place after the group decides to portray the boss. That's when we get introduced to Konihilio or Connie. She is a shy girl that now works as a cleaning maid after her grandmother died. She lives in a kind of a humdrum type of way, but she does have a secret and that secret is a stand. The stand name is The Cure where a small little white rabbit appears and it licks a part of your body that has been wounded and it could heal automatically. It is also said to heal any type of diseases. I don't know if it could cure something like cancer or AIDS, but we'll soon find out that it could cure something even deadlier than a disease. She doesn't know how to control the stand yet, only using it for herself. For whenever she gets into fights, she automatically heals herself. So whenever she gets hit, she doesn't feel anything and takes the majority of the brunt that's dealt to her. She just comes in and swoops in for the victory. She is also given the name Kani Immortal which I think means Connie the immortal basically saying that since she's never been injured she's practically immortal anyway the story picks up when we meet one of her friends known as Winona who immediately when I saw her drawing I was like yes give me more dark-skinned women she's an American who is currently studying abroad in Italy she is currently staying in the same hotel that Connie is working at that's when we see a young boy standing in there with a purple figure. The figure is seen to spew out some type of smoke. That smoke carries some sort of disease and that disease is a flesh-eating virus. Yes, that boy is Fugo and that purple figure is his stand, Purple Haze. Eventually, everybody in the hotel, including Winona, die upset for Connie because she uses her stand to basically heal herself. Basically meaning that she is the only one who is immune to the Purple Haze virus. She eventually faints after basically seeing this horrific detail and this catches the eye of Bucciarotti. The gang of course try to figure out who is this person trying to stalk them, Baki is using moody blues, and we go back to Connie's figuring out that she's being stalked by Fugo. Fugo is of course sending out the purple haze virus as of the request of the boss. He is now allied with the man that the gang is trying to capture. In a way, this is kind of a test for Connie as she's trying to figure out how to use her stand not just for herself but to help out other people. She is of course still weak. She passes out and decides that she's the one to blame. She can't help anyone. She's useless. Meanwhile, the game finally find out the man Sepia only to find out that it's just an alter ego for his real name is Sogliola Lopez? Sogliola Lopez? I'm just gonna call him Lopez. Who we then find out that he has been sent by the boss to go and exterminate Bruno's squad. Lopez and his stand Joy Diversion, which basically he has one thing in his hand and another thing he can touch, he can swap the things. He was being bullied around by the other assassins because his stand was honestly pretty ass. But in the fights, he's used pretty, actually pretty good. 
There's another man that was actually sent by the boss who decided to come out of retirement to find out Guido Mista. That man's name is Rigatoni. Rigatoni is another hitman who uses a gun whose stand is called Public Image Limited in which the gun kind of amplifies the bullets to go like 100% like speed, 100% power, strength, durability, everything. But if a stand is overpowered, there has to be a drawback and the drawback is it takes the power from his body. The good thing is that if he shoots someone, most preferably a stand, it drains the power and the drawback has been limited basically. We get some cool badass fights and we eventually see Giorno and Mista again killing our Rigatoni with him basically giving out the Peter B. Parker not bad kid and passed away due to injury. While Lopez is trying to defeat the squad, the cure Connie stand has took up so much of the purple haze virus it has grown to side and has basically become berserk and of course Bucciarati decided to go on after the stand and try to defeat this bad bunny. It seems hopeless because Bucciarati can't do anything but eventually Konohilio wakes up and she masters her stand and the gang of course goes after Lopez. Lopez's plan is foiled because we find out that Fugo using his super intelligent IQ never told Lopez that Giorno is actually immune to the purple haze vibe. This of course caused Lopez to, to panic really quickly and he eventually gets Ari to death. The ending sees Fugo basically leaving through a boat, basically leaving the same ending like when they betrayed the boss but the opposite because now he's the one leaving in the boat. He says that he holds no regrets on what he did as he never betrayed his group and he never betrayed the boss but he did kill a bunch of people but he didn't betray his gang so that's what it doesn't matter. Even even though Fugo did kill a lot of people, we, we give him the okay, he's good. Darno meets up with Connie and he basically gives a big speech, which I actually want to recite back to you guys. I know you've suffered a lot for the things that happened, but even if everything was caused by one of our companions, listen to my words, please. It's not possible to save everyone. The choices you make are infinite and the world is too complex. Neither you nor I can know which choice is right and which is wrong. The boy inside San Marcos Cathedral all in a single breath, then he had looked her right in the eye as if to say, you understand, right? And had added, whatever might be the terrible consequence that you face, the fact of choosing something and accepting its consequences is the most important thing. Maybe I'm the one being mistaken. After this, Connie decided to go to the United States and hone her skill of her stand and decided to help people. Giorno and the squad basically did the same thing they did in the manga and the anime and, and that's the end of the story. Wow, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but honestly, I think Connie is the best waifu in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. In the light novels, right now, in the light novel. Now she's a nice, innocent girl. Her stand is pretty cool. You know, once she masters it, she's kind of not not un indestructible because she can still be of course killed but i think her stand basically making her grow as a character is really cool she was only using it for herself even though the stand can be used not just for herself but for everyone else kind of the opposite of fugo when his stand hurts himself and everyone so it's this sort of duality that makes jojo's bizarre adventure a really thought-provoking series i think the two villains are okay Lopez is all right. I think Rigatoni is a more interesting character as he was more interested in killing Mista. Like he could have killed the Bakio and Narancia, but he decided, no, I want my first kill to be Mista and he failed. But he even said that he holds no regrets. He said he lived a good life and if he dies, he dies. Unlike Lopez who basically got Ari to death, but whatever. I think this is like a good filler arc for Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Honestly, if the anime was still ongoing i wouldn't have mind this light novel to be adapted this, honestly out of all the light novels not just a part five i think this one could have easily been adapted mainly because the story that both the anime and the manga doesn't really contradict itself maybe unlike purple haze i mean part five is extremely popular in japan and i wouldn't be surprised if they wanting to make more money decided to adapt this light novel into an anime and honestly 
honestly, I'd be game to watch it. Since it was a light novel, there was no panels, so I couldn't really get into the fights. I honestly would like to see, you know, Mista versus Rigatoni and Bruno fighting the big bad bunny. And that's essentially it for this video. I recommend everyone read this light novel. It's really good. It took me like a day to read this, but I was also busy, so I kind of had to sprinkle it in through my day. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to the Mega Drive to download this um, light novel if you want to read it. You know, now that Stone Ocean's popularity has kind of been decreasing since it now releases all at once, I think it's pretty cool that I have at least something to talk about that not a lot of other JoJo creators talk about. You know, they do analysis on JoJo characters, stands, moments, the whole story, the whole arc. I know I've already heard of the other JoJo tubers talk about the stands of this light novel and the others and they also of course they have definitely have read this one before but I haven't really seen anyone on YouTube give a review or summary of these light novels there are audiobooks so if you don't want to read it or if you want to read it and you want to hear someone reading it with you reading it for you you can just search it up online there are a plethora of other light novels that I have to read and we don't even need to mention the dojins no I'm not talking about the spicy ones and I'm not talking about the one with Jolene and that one girl that draws lewd pictures of her that's one that I actually really want to review but I have another one that I want to review not of part five that's my spoiler not of part five and with all that being said you know thank you guys for watching like comment subscribe do everything that every other YouTube tells you to do and I'll see you guys next time